Well, greetings, retro game players. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Marcus, and today we're going to be talking about N64 custom covers to fit inside of your universal game case. So basically, the way it works is that this here is a normal custom case, okay? So it's just a plastic case, you know, the game's inside, like that. And then this insert here, I printed myself. Um, you can go on eBay anytime, any day, and search for pretty much en for any you know N64 game, and you'll find tons of these custom cases. And some of them sell for like seven bucks, that kind of thing. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that's a bad idea if that's what you're into. But what I did is I just figured out how to print these myself. And part of that was um, I just looked online, found the artwork, which you can get at the Cover Project, and I'll put that URL down. Um, and then you would basically uh, find the file you want and then print it up. And uh, well, then you end up with a piece of paper that needs to be cut down to size. So I like these cases. Um, I bought these in bulk. I think I got them for, I'm trying to think how much they were, but basically it was about a hundred of these. Um, and so, you know, I'm trying to go for a full N64 um, cartridge collection, obviously not boxed. I mean, otherwise, you know, that would negate this whole point. Now, I would like to point out, you know, here's a real version of the game right here. So you can see, um, you know, I mean, they're about the same size. And as far as like, um, you know, a shelf, you know, I mean, this one's brand new, but they do look good on the shelf. And in the intro video, uh, for most of my videos, you'll see the pan of um, the shelf of N64 games, and they're all in these custom cases. So, um, but yeah, I'm going for a complete collection, and you know, I don't really want to try and do boxed. It's just, it's overwhelming. I mean, any game that was released with cardboard boxes and manuals is really hard to do. I mean, you know, Sega Master System games and Sega Genesis games are a lot easier to find um, intact and even that can be daunting but when you start to go into the realm of you know paper boxes like this um, you know a lot of people just threw these away I did when I had my N64 I basically was like oh I'll save these for a while and eventually they got crushed down and you know I don't know I honestly don't even know what happened to my original boxes a lot of times um, and I have some but not very many uh, so yeah basically what you end up with though is after you print the artwork you end up with something like this that then needs to be cut down. So you can see I've got a bunch here, you know, that need to be uh, basically cut down to size and then inserted. Um, and you know, I'm on my way to a pretty good collection so far. I, I would say that um, I'm over halfway there and I've got most of the rare games. And I did want to just kind of talk a little bit about some rare games too, um, and also some other examples. So obviously here's one, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Um, again, custom cover, and inside, you know, it's a good case. You'll also notice that I added the labels on top, uh, which I really enjoy these labels. Um, and I can show you how to apply these too. You want to use a heat gun or a hair dryer to apply these. Um, they just work a lot better, like this one is not peeling at all, where if you don't use something and warm it up when you're applying that top label, it, it kind of doesn't work. Obviously, if this is on top, you can have them lined up in a row and you can read all your titles at once, which is really cool. Um, one thing I like about this is I bought the list of labels, like the whole complete set of the US you know, label set, and it includes the gray variant carts, which means you know, some games, for example, like you know, this um, No Mercy game you know, is on a black cart, and I, they didn't make this in a gray one, but there are you know, other games like Turok Rage Wars is a gray variant, and that's you know, harder to find and that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, so the, the sheet actually has all of those games, um, you know, listed as stickers. And so what I like to do is put the sticker on the game and then what's ever left on the sheet, I need to find. So it kind of narrows it down for me and it's a lot easier to deal with. Um, but yeah, Conquers is definitely a good one. Um, and as I said, I've got most of the rare ones. Um, here's another good one, Sculptor's Cut on N64. Um, my cartridge is not in the best of shape as you can see here. So it's a little rough, you know, it's not like horrible. But I also got it for really cheap. I think I got that for like 30 or 40 bucks. So that was really cool. Um, the guy knew it was rare, but he didn't realize whatever. He didn't know how much it was really worth. And we basically negotiated down from 50 bucks. Um, 
But yeah, it's, it's you know, I think it looks really nice with this box. Um, and then also, a couple times, I've tried to find games for, especially the Japanese N64, and I can't find them. I can't find the artwork, so, like this game, for example, which I honestly can't remember the name of it. Let's see if it has it on the cart. It's, oh man, it's, I don't know if it's Fire Pro Wrestling, it's something, Generation 2, I can't remember the name of this, but um, the artwork, this was all made by me, um, and, and it's so funny because publisher, Microsoft Publisher really is not very good, but it did a good job, and I was able to basically make, you know, make this, including like the little honeybee logo right there, so, you know, um, anyway, I went ahead and made this custom artwork, and uh, yeah, I really like it, you know, and then I'll show you another one that I did, so that one is, I'm not sure which wrestling game, uh, and then here's another one, which again is another Japanese one, um, same thing, Hudson, there's a little bee, and there's my cart, I think these are actually really similar to like the, whoops, to the NWO, WCW NWO games, it's like, it's like they're the uh, Japanese versions or something. They're a little different, but they're really cool. The N64 has tons of wrestling games. If you didn't know that, it's one of the best systems for wrestling games. Um, now, another thing I want to talk about real quick here, a little sidestep, is WWF No Mercy, which is one of the best wrestling games made on the N64. This was such an awesome game, and I'm going to hold up actually this one over here because I have three. I have three, and I'll explain why. So this one is sealed, okay? Totally sealed, and I know you're like, well, big freaking deal. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a rare game, and the reason it's rare is because it was released after they found a bug in the game. So the way, so what happened is originally, if you look at w, um, WF No Mercy games, you'll see some text, and I'll get a close-up of this, but basically, there's text right down here, and it says, um, NUS-NW4E-USA, okay? Well, on this particular cartridge, there's a dash one after it, on this one right here. This one goes in my plastic case, okay? The reason is, it, if you start looking for this, you'll see what I'm talking about, but the dash one is hard to find. And the reason that the dash one came out is because that first game-breaking bug, what would happen is the game would crash and it would actually eat your character. This It would erase your save data and some other weird shit would happen. I don't know because I've never played through it on that cartridge. But what happened is that THQ went ahead and um, released an update, a fix for it, and they only mailed it to people that complained. All right, so it was a really low production run and they, they identified it with a dash one. So anytime you're out looking at games, you'll see this game everywhere, and I see it all the time. People are flipping through carts, looking for this thing, or not looking for this, they just breeze by it. They're like, oh, you know, no mercy, I see it all the time. Start looking and see if you can find a dash one. If you find a dash one, I wanna know about it, seriously. Um, and I'm gonna show you a couple other things here. So that was one that I found loose, so I just made a case for it, okay? This is an opened version of a sealed game, and here's a sealed one. I got these from the same person. These came from a wholesale lot. Um, in other words, it was a box from THQ. The guy worked at THQ when this happened, and he was able to get, uh, hopefully legitimately, get a box um, from THQ of these games. So, you know, ones that were, were made and they were just leftovers. So this one's sealed, and then I did, just to confirm that it was a dash one, open this one. So I opened this one up. I'll go ahead and do it, just for fun. Just for fun. Okay, so there it is. And sure enough, brand new. I know it's probably really hard to see, but there's a dash one there. Right here, right after that USA. So anyway, so basically, um, if you guys see these games, check them out. Not only is it an awesome game, it really is, but um, the Dash 1 means that it won't freak out and lose your save game. So it's definitely worth it. Um, and so I just want to talk about that briefly. Uh, yeah, so basically, all these covers, you know, um, this is another thing I'll say is, you know, I'm never, I'm, I'm never trying to sell N64 games like on eBay with these covers. I'm not doing that. I'm not looking down on people who do do that either. 
You know, if that's something that you're into, that's that's fine. That, that's that's just not what I'm doing. I'm doing this because I want my games to look very cool on the shelf, and that's that's why I'm doing this. Um, and the N64 library is something I really identify with. I mean, I, of course, being into you know Sega Genesis and Sega Master System and Nintendo and all those systems is great, but N64 was something for me that I really loved. And um, you know, there's a lot of shitty games for it, but obviously the ones that are great are phenomenal. You know, GoldenEye, Banjo Kazooie, you know, Mario, all those. You know, Mario Kart. I mean, there were so many awesome games made for it. And so I like to display my N64 collection uh, with these custom cases. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to um, actually obtain the artwork from the website that I mentioned, and then how to open it up. Personally, I use MS Paint, which I know is weird but it works and then the settings that you need to print for because you actually have to go in and change um, under page setup and specifically choose these this this way of printing another thing that you'll need is legal size paper if you decide to do this so what I'm gonna do is show you that now on how to obtain it and then um, afterwards I'll show you how to trim down the paper and we'll go ahead and put it in a case Okay, so here we are on the coverproject.net. So this is where you want to go to download the artwork. You can see on the left side over here, there's lots of other games. Although we're going to be focusing right here on the Nintendo 64. Um, also, I'd like to point out that you can go to the guide section if you want to. Um, and I think it's in here. Uh, printing. Oh, actually, there was another spot too. Let's see, hold on. Right here. Printing covers. So this is the same exact instructions for different, you know, various printing programs or uh, image programs. So we're going to be using Paint, which is just easy because it's included with every version of, you know, Windows, basically. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and go back to N64. Here's all the different games and all the artwork. And uh, let's go ahead and do Diddy Kong Racing right here. And then you can see a little preview window over here, which is nice. And then you can see the PAL version. Um, here's the label, um, which is kind of cool. Um, custom cover, custom cover for PAL. Looks like this is Australia. Here's another label. Anyway, we're going to do the retail cover NTSC. And so you just hit download. And then down here, I'm just going to go ahead and say open. And then over here, I'm going to say open and choose paint. So here it is. It's kind of zoomed in. That's OK. The trick right away is to go to your page setup file or settings. And then in here, first thing you want to do is put this to legal. So you do need legal paper. Um, so change that to legal there um, and then make sure your centering is set like that and then also adjust to 100% so these are the settings you want right here um, and this will make sure you know that it fits in that custom case it'll fit perfectly after you trim it down so you just say okay and then you actually just print it you know to your printer um, and you know that's about it so let's go ahead and look at what it looks like afterwards one other thing worth mentioning is that if you're going to start printing these in color it's important to consider the printer that you're using because color ink can be very expensive and if you don't have access to a color laser printer um, it's going to be it's going to tear through your ink you know because now if you're just printing like 10 games, no problem, right? But when you're printing like 50 covers or 100 covers, prepare to go through some toner or some ink. And here's an example, okay? So here's NFL Blitz. You can see um, it's a special edition, which is actually a, a sort of a rare, rarer game. It's not super rare, but it's, it's, it's uh, less common. And you can see how good the red looks on the side over here. It's very clear and crisp. Um, now here, look at this one here. Here's Spider-Man. And you can see what's happening. It's fading to orange. Now, some people that might not bother you, because again, these are just you know home cases, not a big deal. 
Um, but you know, this is where I'll probably take out my toner, for example, in this case, and give it a good left and right shaking, which kind of distributes the toner around inside, and you can usually get a few more copies printed. But if not, I gotta replace the toner to get the quality back up. So I probably printed, I would guess, maybe 100, maybe 200 pages, you know, before it started to get kind of weak. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's something that you gotta start watching because if you just start printing like 50 copies, you know, sure enough, at some point, you're gonna start running out of ink on, on, on one of these. And, and again, ink's expensive. So keep that in mind when you're printing all these, okay? There's just something I wanna throw out there. Okay, so you can see that I've got quite a few different ones that we're gonna, that I need to print. Some of these are varying quality. Some of them even have stickers, um, <laughs> like this, this weird barcode thing is a sticker, so somebody actually scanned that in. Now on the website, there was another one that was a custom one without this, but I like the layout of it, and this really doesn't bother me. So if it bothers you, you might want to be aware that some of these are not perfect. Um, but the one I'm looking for... Diddy Kong Racing. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. You can see I've got Diddy Kong Racing right here, ready to rock. Got the top label done. And then it's actually got a pretty cool uh, racing card, which is pretty awesome. So, that's going to go inside here. I don't have the manual, but I've got that. So, it's not super technical, although honestly, um, it can be a little tricky. So I recommend you guys get one of these cool cutters. You can use scissors if you want. No shame in that. So, see if I can do this. At least for me, the idea is to just kind of line it up and do it relatively fast, you know? Um, in that case, I did pretty good. I did get a little bit of ink, obviously, but that's okay. Some, some is fine. And then I'll do the same thing here. Just do it kind of quick. That's that's my advice. If you go slow, it can it can mess up. The tops are a little bit different. You kind of need to cut them in a little bit. Um, it's always tricky for me. This part is never perfect. So you want it to be as perfect as you can. Like that looks really good but it may not fit in the case. So we'll see here how it fits in a second. I'm gonna do the same thing here. The problem is, is you if you have to trim a little tiny bit here, when you go to do that, I'll just show you. So like, here's a piece of paper and I'll just try and trim like a little sliver off. It worked for a little bit and then it failed. Um, so that's kind of what happens. All right, so now that I've got my Hey, my cover cut out. Let's see if it'll fit in the case. So I'm gonna take my game out. Basically, you fold this back, the plastic comes out, just like a normal cover from any old retro console. Um, I want the cover to be on this side. So this is how I'd like it to look, like that. So just take it like this. This is where you'll know if you need to trim it down or if you trimmed it down too much. Okay. This looks pretty good. Basically, you just want the tips up here kind of aligned and then down here as well. And then if it looks pretty good, you can go ahead and close it. And I like to kind of judge the center crease right here for when I close it. So, honestly, that's pretty good. Um, there's not a lot of bubbling going on on the artwork at all. Sometimes what will happen is if you cut it too long, it'll bubble up over here. The, the paper will kind of wad up inside of this plastic and it looks really bad. Um, you can also sometimes do this if that happens. For example, it is a little bit long. It's barely long, though I'm not going to even mess with it. But sometimes you can slide it up a little bit more to the top, like I'm kind of pushing it this way. And if I can get it to do that, it'll sometimes alleviate some of that excess paper here. So that's how it looks. Let's go ahead and put the game in. Diddy 
Kong Racing. There we go. And there you go. Okay, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys how to do the labels should you choose to get the N64 um, labels that go on the top here. So this is uh, Snowboard Kids. This is actually kind of a beat up label itself on the front. I don't replace those, although some people do. Um, and if you do do that, always make sure that you print, you know, reproduction label. Um, don't get yourself in trouble by trying to reproduce this and then possibly sell it down the road, even if your intentions are good. You know, if you do a label like on the front here, my recommendation is to just put a little disclaimer on the bottom or something. But in this case, you know, we're just adding. So we're just putting something on the top, which helps with identifying the N64 cart um, on your shelf when they're displayed, you know. Um, but, and that's without the box, obviously. But since we're doing the cases, um, this is sort of, you know, there's not really a point. It's a little bit redundant, I guess you could say, to have a label here and also do a hardcover case with it. Um, but as I said, what I like about this is that this kind of keeps me organized as far as which games I'm missing. So as you go through this, you can see a lot of these labels are already affixed. And the ones that are remaining are the games that I need. Um, and then also you notice at the back page, uh, this section right here is all of the variants and the gray cards and that kind of stuff. So I still need a quite a few of those, but I have some of the good ones too. Um, anyway, the trick to getting these things to apply, as I also said, was using some kind of a heat gun. So in this case, I'm using a pretty nice heat gun. Um, it's got two speeds, you know, it's got low and high. We're gonna be doing low, which um, I'm guessing is about 750 watts, somewhere around there. Um, you can also use a hair dryer, not a problem. But when you apply the sticker to this, um, always make sure it's clean. So this has been cleaned. Um, you just want to make sure that there's no other sticker or crap on there, you know. Um, but if you don't use the heat gun, it, it does start to bubble up. Um, and that's, that's what I noticed. And honestly, I even used the heat gun. Um, at first, I was a little worried about, you know, maybe cooking it too much or doing something like that. But... Um, so I think I only did it for like 50, no, sorry, about five seconds or so when I first did it, and that was not long enough. I thought it was warm. It definitely heats up, but you'll see I really do it for quite a while um, until it really warms up, and then I'll place it on there. So let's go ahead and apply that, and I'll show you how. So you can see I've got my Snowboard Kids sticker. Peel that off, which is nice because, again, that's one more game down. And when I, when I place it, I just grab the sides and I'm kind of lining up this side here. So I'm gonna try and do it as close as possible. Just like that. Try and center it. And I kind of run my finger down the spine, but I'm not pushing on the outer side. So to me, that's, that's good. Um, you can see though that it's you know, it's still kind of hanging up there a little bit on the top So that's where this comes in. I'm gonna go ahead and move these and Turn apply the low setting Once it starts to get warm enough, you'll feel it. And then while it's still warm, that's when you go ahead and apply pressure like that. It's nice and toasty. So that's on there real good and that won't come up. Um, I have a ton of these now and all of them look good. In fact, the ones that did peel, as I said, I only applied the heat for about five seconds and it just wasn't long enough, you know? Um, 
And uh, so I went back through them and I applied the heat longer and just pushed down where the bubble was. And that was only on like 10 carts. But now I've got, oh, I don't know how many I've got, probably over 100 that I've done. And uh, yeah, they look cool. So I'm gonna put them in the cases. Um, so again, it's kind of redundant to have this top part, but I like it. I don't know, it doesn't bother me. And again, it kind of keeps me organized because now as I'm going, you know, to different, um, you know, conventions or whatever, I'll just look for the games I don't have. Um, and it's also cool because what I did was I went through this list and I actually used Evernote and just made like a checklist. And since this is all in alphabetical order, um, I mean, it's these pages aren't, but A, you know, they, they can be alphabetized, they were. And so when I went down and just made a list in Evernote, um, it made it very easy. And so now I can just kind of go, you know, alphabetically through it. So anyway, that's how you do the top labels. So let's move on to the- All right guys, so there you have it. Diddy Kong Racing and our custom cover which I think looks really cool. And, um, you know, I don't know. It's it's definitely got some expense to this. You know, you have to buy the case. Uh, you need the paper, which is all legal size. Uh, you need toner, you need a color printer. Um, you need the time, you need a paper cutter. So yeah, it's definitely kind of a little bit of an obsession that I, I you know, kind of fell into. Um, you can also buy them if you want on eBay. That's something you can do too. Um, but really, I just like them, you know, and they keep the games in pristine condition and um, of course if you come across a game in its original box by all means try and get that that's much more preferable than this but of course if not this is a good alternative and um, yeah I just wanted to share it with you guys there's also other other covers you'll notice on the cover project too um, you know they have old school stuff they have Wii they've got GameCube whatever so they have lots of different ones I just have fallen into the N64 category like I said I'm trying to get a complete collection and I've got most of the rare ones uh, there's a few like the gray variants that I don't have I don't have the uh, Turok Rage Wars gray variant and I don't have the uh, Aiden Chronicles gray variant and stuff like that so I'm definitely missing a few but um, you know slowly I'll get there it'll take some time but I've got most of the tough ones I'd say I'm not saying that the gray ones aren't hard to get but I've got most of the tough ones sculptors cut check you know so anyway you guys I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was informative and of course until next time keep it retro by working on your old n64 game cases later on